this is my daffodil and it's flowering when it comes to daffodils what do you do with the flowers either you just leave it like this in the garden and enjoy it or you can harvest it or you can use some cut flowers and have it as a decoration but what do you do when your succulents flower this is an achevria Pearl von Nonberg, or otherwise known as Shortcut PVN. Hello there, my name is Liz, a self-confessed succulent addict. Welcome to my channel, Growing Succulents. Now, there are different types of succulent flower. This one has got the flower blooms or eventually this will open up and bloom and also you have all these leaves on the stem of the plant or inflorescence so the whole flower stalk is what you call inflorescence so you've got the leaves the stem and the flower blooms so this is one type or one form of flowering on Echeveria. Graptopetalum purple haze is also flowering and this one has a different type. This one has shorter inflorescence and also small leaves. This is Graptoveria opalina and it's also the same as the PVN wherein it has a stem that has leaves, small leaves on it like the PVN and also the purple haze. These are my agavoides. So I've got Frankie, Brazen Beauty, and also this beautiful, gorgeous, one of my favorite <laughs> Echeveria agavoides lipstick or Red Edge. And this one has got, all of them, has got a different types or different form of inflorescence. So the stem is quite skinny but the leaves are very small and the tips has got the same flower blooms eventually and also these red edge or lipstick are the same story but the leaves are very small so you can see it's almost drying off Echeveria gavoidis ebony here is the same story they are flowering as well but the stem again is kind of skinny because the leaves are all small and tiny look at that so if I remove that you can see that it's very 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 small my Romeo Ruben here is the same story although the leaves are also red look at that but the stem is also well the stem also are sort of skinny and the leaves are small Graptosedum blue bean here is the same thing so I think they're Graptosedum Pachyphilum or something like that. I can't remember the name, <laughs> but it's like sedum. So these sedum are also the same as the PVN. They have a different look. It's not as compact as the PVN, but the leaves are quite thick and fat like this. See, look, it's like a jelly bean. So this is a blue jelly bean, I think one of the names. So there you go. So that one, I can put it there. And that leaf I've just taken, let's go take some more, from the inflorescence, will and can grow into another plant. Just like the PVN, this Tramontana has also got a lot of thick leaves on the inflorescence. And up the tip of that one, you'd say that's a flower. It will flower. It will eventually bloom and open up. And... So this will be the part where you can cross-pollinate it to grow some seeds or get some seeds that you can plant and grow some new babies. So if I were to leave this Tramontana flower buds to bloom, just like this one on this Echeveria tipi, this is a good candidate for cross-pollinating and also for growing seeds so the only way you can get seeds from succulents or this echeverias what i have here right now so these ones are the same thing so that one there is 
about to bloom but right now it's still close off so you'll have to wait until it opens up like this so that it can be cross-pollinated cross-pollinated is basically just getting some part of this you can self-pollinate it with itself so say for example pretend that one of these is also like that so you can just do cross-pollination like that and that seed pod at the back of this flower here inside there is a little ovary or seed pod casing or is this a seed pod and we're in the seeds is going to form and if you don't do that or if they don't get cross pollinated then they won't form a seed pod to get some seeds from so if you can see the ovum or the ovaries in the center there see that brown form there I think this one has already been cross-pollinated because it looks like it's already starting to form a seed pod inside there, that little round thing. So this would have been cross-pollinated with another plant. And if I were to get, get some seeds from this and plant it and grow it, then I might get a variation of this Echeveria tipi. So that means that the next Echeveria tipi grown from a seed from this one might not look like this Echeveria tipi. So in the case of this Tramontana, if I want to grow some succulents from it, I would harvest the leaves like this. So this is also the same as with, so you just sort of pull it on the side like this and I'm just going to break this off. Okay, so this one inflorescence has I've got, look, so far, five leaves from it. So if I were to take all of these, six, seven, right down to the tip of the flower bud, 14, just make sure there's no aphids or mealybug. So 15, look at that one, 16, once, so that's 16, just from one inflorescence. And this one's now, I can either bring it inside, uh, grow it in the shade and wait for it to uh, germinate or have some pups. Or what I like to do with this one normally, I just leave it like this. Not all plants or succulents or echeveria for this matter uh, will grow or germinate, but a lot of them do. So this one now, there's nothing I can do about this one except maybe try and get even the smallest ones like that and hopefully that will also germinate into a plant because sometimes this is what happens so this Echeveria sagita variegata so this is a variegated plant has got something exciting happening here so from last time or last season last time it flowered this is a very tiny leaves as well okay or leaf that was taken from this sagita so this is not a fat leaves like the PVN or the Tramontana this is quite skinny so it still grew a little pup, you can see that, okay? But some of them, if you pluck them too close to the flower petal or the flower bud, you can get something like this happening. The little leaf has grown a pup or a baby, but it's a flower look at the flower so it will form like that so if you ever wonder why some of the leaves will sometimes if you propagate like i do from leaves you will get instances wherein the leaves will just produce a flower like that now if you were to cross pollinate this little flower maybe i haven't tried it maybe it might form a seed pod or maybe not because i haven't tried it so i don't really know but all i know but this one i just discarded well this one waste not want not i'm planting that one there but the leaf i'm gonna leave it here to grow and see what happens 
So with the tramontana leaves like this or the blooms or the inflorescence, that's what I would do. So even now, I'm just going to take them all off because it doesn't serve its purpose. But I will just sort of leave a little bit of stem so I can pull that out later on with the tweezers uh, when it dries up. So I'm not going to remove that while it's still green because uh, it's inviting things to happen. So I'm just going to leave this for now. So these ones, you can either leave it and have some flower blooms and you can cross pollinate and get some seed pods or like this teepee here, it already has some really skinny leaves. So these leaves, just like the sagita that I showed you, this might grow and this might also just grow some flower as well. But since this tipi has got some babies ready. It's ready to produce one, two, three, four, five babies to encourage it because because this year now, in a couple of weeks' time, I am going to pull this out and harvest all those babies separated from the mummy and to encourage this tipi, the mummy tipi, to produce more babies for the next season it is best to remove all the inflorescence like this because I don't really want to grow this into seeds because that just encourages the nasties to come along like aphids and millibug and ants. Okay, so this one, I'm already removing this one, but I'm still leaving some stem to dry up and I can remove it much easier with my uh, forceps later on. So that one is good and ready to go. I just have to, uh, inside I just saw something. Inside as well, there's a, another flower. Inflorescence about to pop out. So if you can see that in the middle there, I will just wait for that one to pop out. And then that way I can access it much better and remove it like, just like what I did with the other one. Now this is my Simulans Ascension. A Chivaria Simulans Ascension, and they have pretty flowers. Look at this. Okay, just gonna. Oh, that's about to uh, bloom. And with this one as well, I don't really want to have this bloom because now you can see. Look, I'm not gonna grow it from seeds. I'm just. They they are actually prolific puppers, so they will throw off some pups but having the flower or the inflorescence like this look look what's happening you get a lot of aphids and if i want this to say for example i want to look at that hang on wait i just show you the aphids again if i want to get some seeds from this one then the best course of action is to spray the aphids like this and kill them. I'm using my metho solution again. So there's a video of how I made my DIY fungicide uh, pesticide 75% metho it says. But anyway, so now up the top here, there's ants. So you can see the ants, the ants comes in and get attracted to the nectar that the aphids produces so they come but then they go away and go back somewhere else and on their path they travel somewhere else and they would leave some little baby aphids behind or sometimes mealybug so it's best to for this one now remove 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 all this inflorescence or flower stalk so this colorata here, the inflorescence is full of uh, aphids. So this one, I actually sprayed this a few days ago and you can see it's all dried up. So if I were to harvest or want to get some seeds from this colorata, I would just spray it and leave it. And I will just check just in case there's some new ones that pops up and that one is already dried up. So most of these have dried up. So the inflorescence now, the, the flower... Uh, buds now when they do grow they can be cross-pollinated with uh, by the insects or by myself doesn't really matter then I can have some seed pods but this colorata also just like the simulans is quite a good papa so I'm just gonna remove all of this nasty even that one there see look freshly new one I don't want that and inside there which I can't get to it because it's just so tightly packed. I will just spray it with my metho solution. 
die. Okay, might as well spray the whole lot to make it look pretty. And if there's any aphids there or mealybug that's dropping there, they're going to die. This is Polydonis. This Polydonis is the same thing. Uh, the other plants, I can't remember which one now. This one uh, also have some flower stalks about to pop out. But this one, see you can see the ants now? Sort of run little ant crawling around because this is now infested with ants look they form a nest in the center there so this is what happens when the flower comes out the ants come or the aphids come and then the ants come and then the ants started making their house see all of that that's they growing their nest the ants nest is starting to grow in there look there's little baby ants in there or something and also mealybug so that's what it does and the mealybugs and the aphids and the ants come along and they will infect your plant and soon it will die so in this scenario I will remove all of this because you can see that this polydonis here is quite a good papa it produces a lot of babies and this one now that's ready springtime so we can hang on I have to just spray this first like so and I'm even gonna blast that off there you go that stops the ants from saying oh we've been disturbed over there I don't like the plant anymore I'm gonna go away so but I'll spray the whole lot and I will come back tomorrow and remove those inflorescences when they dry up but look at the flower of the Polydonis. it's got some red spikes on it so pretty but anyway i can't touch that until tomorrow just make sure i covered everything underneath as well and look so lots of babies coming out of there so there's really no need to save the seeds for this one now my gorgeous -er, gorgeous -er <laughs> red edge or lipstick i'm gonna do the same just remove all of them off with their heads even this Frankie and Brazen Beauty remove all of them because I don't want aphids or mealybug or ants crawling about so this will still try to put out some some more flower stalks but you just have to keep at it and when it pops out you just remove it and everything will be okay see even that one there I still can't remove that I'll really I'll wait until it pops out even that one now I can remove that because that's just gonna get longer again and but those ones I have to leave it small but just in case there is some nasties hiding. It's best to just spray it with Metho, Metho Woman, Metho Man. Okay, we Metho all of them. Done. Okay. So this is my Echeveria agavoides corderoi. This plant is a bit stingy. It will not put out babies, but I already have some corduroy that's crested that I was able to pluck out a lot of babies from it. So I don't really need to grow this flower stalk and harvest the seeds from it. But since I would like to cross pollinate this with something else and as I can see there is no aphids. I think there might be. Is that a spider? Yes, it's a spider hiding in there. So no aphids so far. So, oops. There's an aphid over there. Can you see the aphid? There you go. There's one there. So I want to save the flower. And there's one aphid. So spray. Spray. There you go. And also this white ebony up the top here is the same story. I'll just check if there's aphids and maybe yes maybe not if there's none that's fine and there's a whole lot of spiders as well there's a spider web so sometimes spider web look at that okay can you move my hand there's a spider in there he is your friend because he can protect the aphids from 
coming in or the ants because the ants gonna get trapped on the spider web and they don't like that so that's why I also leave some spider web they do good as well even here it can be beneficial to have spider webs in this scenario we're in I'm uh, trying to grow hang on what are you there's a little ant in here see how did you escape that see this ant here or oh, that's a spider i'm sorry mr spider i sprayed it okay now it's the same story with my romeo here my romeo i was uh well i would really like to save the the seed pods from this one and this one is also about to bloom but i'm just worried that before it had some aphids and it's I already sprayed it and it's already dried up you can see from the top there so I'm leaving that one to get some seeds from that one as well so this one is also a mestro a mestro you can grow from a leaf I have successfully grown a mestro from a leaf slow but they do grow from leaves quite easily so I'm in two minds still whether I should remove that or not but I'll wait until I will see I'm still hoping that the leaves from the stem or the flower stalk or the inflorescence will be thick enough for me to grow some leaves or harvest some leaves to grow into babies otherwise the best thing to do just like this Frank Reynold is remove 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 all the flower stalk oh look it's a crested flower stalk. <laughs> Are you going to produce crested babies as well? Now, it's too late to find out because I already removed it. But anyway, it's the same story with this other one. This is Benimus, Benimusmi, Benimusumi, which I don't... Oh, I forgot. I was supposed to get some seeds from you. Never mind. I'm just going to leave the other one there. So this is a compact form, doesn't want to put out baby from a Benimusumi and I suspect that might not even be a Benimusumi. So anyway, this one here, this is a very special red edge and also another special red edge, nice and fat. It's got broader leaves, so that's already a hybrid of some sort and look how gorgeous those reds nice and thick as well so those ones I'm not touching I'm gonna leave them as well but I'm still gonna keep an eye on them but this one here is a prolific my this is actually a variegated what are you variegated water lily that the variegation has disappeared because I expose it to the Sun and the leaves has got to go because all those babies there as well it's a prolific papa so it produces a lot of babies so I don't need to save the seeds now this ebony here is the same story I don't know I'm in two minds whether I should leave it or not now if it doesn't get any aphids then I will leave it but if it does then I will remove it this blue metal here is actually grown from an inflorescence so it's the same thing it's got a flower stalk like this this is from last season and I harvested the leaves this is actually this would still actually strike otherwise this one oh hang on wait a minute yeah that one could still possibly be a young leaf so young enough but this one now that's already old but you never never know you just leave it at that and then that will still strike these two are grown from a leaf like that and look at them now beautiful gorgeous very frost hardy these ones now and so these ones now as well I'm gonna they're all flowering and I don't really want to grow them from seeds or anything and look see aphids ready starting so now I'm just gonna harvest them all now do you want to keep your flower stalks or remove them it's up to you but look I've got something funky going on in here see this is the beauty of doing this you find all sorts of things so that one there the rest of the flower stalk are quite skinny look at that one but that one there is nice and thick and fat and look at that are you gonna grow into a plant or not only time will tell so if you do get something like that and it's sort of you have to leave it for a while to find out whether that's actually a flower or a baby like this one see 
that one there as well. So that's also another babies coming out, but they're not terminal flowers. So they are proper plant. But I still have to find out. So we'll have to wait and see. And look, there's more on that one. So you can see the babies inside there. Look at that. So those flower stems like that, you if they're thick, you have to leave it. I'm just going to continue to remove all these nasties here. Oh, there's more. See these ones here? I might leave you because the leaves are thick enough and you haven't got any aphids anyway. So I'm going to leave that one. But this one, what are you? bronze beauty you don't need all of that because you've got oh my goodness look so gorgeous that plant the claws i hope you learned something or i'm able to shed light into what to do with your flowers or when you're succulent flowers and also this leticia here it's the same thing this leticia here can it's got aphids look but those little inflorescence uh leaves look at that so the leaves can be harvested and grow into babies like that. If you leave that there, that will grow. Oh, it got stuck in the web. Doesn't matter. So I'll show you another plant that are prolific puppers from inflorescence leaves. So this is my Echeveria melaco. And Echeveria melaco grows babies from the stem so you can see those tiny little babies there's the babies i'm about to sneeze but anyway the babies are there well this it's grown a lot of babies so i don't really need to grow these from leaves but if however you prefer to grow hang on i'll put you here back if you prefer to grow some echeveria melaco from leaves this is my Echeveria Melaco that got hit by the frost, but it doesn't matter. See all those babies there? They're all grown from inflorescence leaves. And if I were to plant this in the soil and give it a proper home, every single one of them are another plant. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So easily. 25 at least i can see so there you go guys thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next video i just put back the simulants and look there's some aphids in there okay die die aphids die oops what have i got there i got some plants that i haven't watered at the back clavata <laughs> crassula clavata hello Okay, ah, that's why they're called the cockroach, aren't they? Okay, dead cockroach. So now this clavata is the same plant as this. So I've been looking for it and I couldn't find it. Now I know where it went. So anyway, that's it. I kept saying goodbye and saying that's it. And then I go do some more and do some more. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Oh, more Malacco. More melaco and more baby melaco. Melasso.